At this point, it's likely that the Midwest will experience a significant winter storm, and now there's an increasing possibility that we could see the snow move even further eastward towards the northeast coast, where now we have been seeing some interesting developments with the computer models where they want to bring the snow a little bit further eastward as of the latest forecast runs. If we were to take a look at the latest forecast run of the European model at this time, of course, we've been talking about this Clipper system that's expecting to move to the east just north of the United States states border that's not only going to bring snow to the interior portions of the midwest but also bring plenty of cold air behind it to create an unstable environment for a significant winter storm to develop for the midwest if i were to continue to move forward we do see some snow showers in the northern portions of minnesota as well as michigan however again the key thing associated with this slow pressure system is that it's going to bring plenty of cold air behind it to create an unstable environment in the midsection of the country and we exactly see that occurring where we do see an enhanced amount of convection going on in the southeast where right in between texas and oklahoma you're experiencing some thunderstorm activity associated with this jet stream dip and we're seeing just enough instability to maintain that convection for quite a while so if you're in the eastern portions of oklahoma and texas you might you might need to watch out for the possibility of thunderstorms and potentially flash flooding in certain areas because this rain could be heavy at times and it should stay over the same area for a prolonged period so you might want to at least be aware of that possibility as we approach the midweek of this week by the wednesday time frame and we do see that uh, we're going to see another round of cold air move in and that's really going to trigger the convection as we continue to move forward into the later week where we see a low pressure system finally develop in the midsection of the country and we do see that we're just behind the solar pressure system we see another Alberta Clipper move just north of the United States border and this will bring some snow showers to the northern portions of the Dakotas as well as um, potentially Minnesota and not only that it's going to bring another round of cold air which could create just enough of an unstable environment for convection to develop to bring some snow to portions of the northeast if I were to continue to move forward so um, for this first low pressure system that's expecting to move up the Mississippi River Valley, this should primarily impact the northern Great Lakes as well as interior portions of the northeast. But it does become interesting right after this low pressure system moves through. So if we were to take a look, we see that this low pressure system strengthens quite a bit where we see the millibar pressure drop down to 995 millibars. And we see heavy rain throughout a large portion of the Midwest. But of course, we see heavy snowfall on the northwestern side of this low pressure system as the temperature of course is cold enough to support for the precipitation to fall in the form of snowfall and we do see the snow even move as far east as milwaukee so milwaukee by the late thursday time frame you could be in for some snowfall and you, and there could maybe be that possibility that maybe Chicago could get involved with a little bit of snowfall. It really all depends on the trajectory of the slow pressure system. And while the forecast is pretty certain that it should move in this general direction, you um, there still could be those minor variations in the forecast that could potentially bring snow as far southeast as Chicago. So Chicago, you might not be ruled out of the snow just yet, but I will say that most likely the heaviest snow snow will be just the northwest of Chicago so if you're hoping for major snow out of this low pressure system at, at least out of this specific low pressure system then in Chicago you might not want to hold your breath on that because it seems like this storm will move a little bit too far to the northwest to bring an off snow event for Chicago at the very least but you could experience some snow if we do see a small variation in the forecast where it wants to steer the trough a little bit further eastward and really all depends on the strength and the position of this ridge if this ridge is a little bit further eastward then of course the snow should move further eastward so you want to pay close attention to that if you're hoping for snow in the Chicago metro area now Continuing to move forward with the forecasts, we're going to see that the snow will eventually move into the interior northeast where northern Vermont as well as the northern portion of New Hampshire and Maine should get involved with some heavy snowfall. But a, a lot of these areas that will experience snowfall in the interior northeast will likely change over to rain as we approach a Friday time frame. And I want to shift my, focus, um, shift my focus a little bit more to the west where we do see that same clipper 
pressure system lurking right behind this initial low pressure system and that's key because this clipper system is expected to create another convective environment right around the midwest for potentially our next um snow um snow potential for the east coast of the united states so while this first low pressure system won't bring any sort of snow to much of the northeast this next low pressure system that is expected to develop as a result of this jet stream dip could bring some snow to the more coastal areas of the east coast which is very interesting we do see that on the back side of this low pressure system we do see that there is quite a bit convection that's beginning to develop because Associated with this clipper system is a very significant jet stream dip as a European model expects that there's going to be just enough of a northwesterly flow associated with this initial trough as well as this clipper system for the cool air to move further southward to interact with the very warm and moist environment we uh, um, see in um, that we're seeing in the southeast for a uh, decent amount of convection to develop in the southeast but continuing to move forward we will eventually see this clipper system interact with this convection and that could bring some snow up along the east coast where we do see some snow into pennsylvania and while it the european model initially wants to begin this storm system this um, event as a rain event for much of the interstate 95 corridor cities we do see that this eventually changes over into more of a snow event for new york city we do see some mixed precipitation in Philadelphia and even Connecticut. Massachusetts gets involved with some snowfall. And we do see a little bit of a nor'easter develop. The timing will be very key because if we're able to see an unstable environment a little bit earlier, then that could mean you would be in for more snowfall because, of course, the storm system would be a little bit more developed and it'll be able to develop its snow bands a little bit more if this storm were to develop a little bit earlier we have to wait and see the gfs model expects a low pressure system to develop a little bit earlier which would bring much more snowfall for not only the east coast of the united states but for the ohio river valley as well so it's going to be very interesting to see how this unfolds over the next several days really all depends on how significant the jet stream dip will be because at this point the european model while it does expect a significant jet stream dip it expects the cold air to be a little bit more sprawled out and doesn't expect the jet stream dip to be as significant as gfs model and that would um develop this second low pressure system a little bit slower than the gfs model so there would be less of a snow event but the east coast would still experience some snow in the european model scenario but in the gfs model scenario we see the cold air a little bit more concentrated in one area and it's and the jet stream dip is a little bit more significant so we see the low pressure system develop quite a bit earlier and that brings heavy snowfall well over six inches of so snow throughout the ohio river valley as well as the coastal northeast so there's at least something we're going to need to pay close attention to now let me show you guys the gfs model scenario so for this first low pressure system the gfs and the european model are pretty certain on the exact trajectory and the exact strength of this low pressure system as both of the computer models want to take it up the mississippi river valley and bring snow to much of the same areas for this first low pressure system the, the small difference is that it wants to bring the snow the gfs model wants to bring the snow a little bit further westward to where portions as far west as des moines could get involved and it's more of a um and we do see a little bit of snow in the chicago area in the gfs model scenario but for the most part very similar to what the european model is stating at least for this first low pressure system where the uncertainty arises is with this clipper system because like i said the gfs model expects the jet stream dip to be a little bit more significant behind this clipper system and as a result we see the low pressure system develop a lot earlier where instead of developing right around the interstate 95 corridor we see this storm system develop as early as the mississippi river valley and that brings heavy snowfall to portions of st louis a large portion of illinois as well and we see a pretty significant snowstorm all throughout much of the ohara valley and this would include the east coast as well where again the gfs model initially expects this to begin as a rain event but thanks to the northwesterly winds that are expected 
to uh, um, move into the northeast as you approach the weekend it the precipitation should eventually um, move into the into the form of snowfall where we do see that philadelphia and washington dc get involved with very heavy snowfall in this scenario and even new york city could get involved um d depending on the exact trajectory of this low, low pressure system as it approaches the interstate 95 corridor cities but this is a pretty significant winter storm for much of the east coast and impacts many of the high population centers of the northeast so there's only something to at least be aware of right up along the east coast for this winter like i've been saying for a lot of my past forecasts the european model has been the more reliable forecast model when it comes to the winter storms this winter but we can't completely disregard the gfs model either and there's still a decent amount of uncertainty of how heavy the snow will be between the two computer model scenario and where exactly the heaviest snowfall will be located so we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to any changes in the forecast but now with both of the computer models thinking that there's at least going to be some snow up along the mid-atlantic states then that certainly does increase the possibility that at least some sort of snow will impact the areas further southward into the northeast so there's at least something to pay very close attention to as we approach the midweek and into the weekend so this is what the GFS model expects when it comes to snowfall accumulation over the next week. We do see that this is an extremely significant snowstorm for much of the Midwest and the mid-Atlantic states where we do see Philadelphia experience well over 6 inches of snow, anywhere between 6 to 12 inches of snow. So is, um, so as Washington, D.C., New York City is right up along the border between experiencing 6 to 12 inches to no snow at all. So this could be a very significant winter storm for much of the East Coast if the GFS model was correct. And then we do see even moving further westward into the Oh, um, just north of the Ohio River Valley, we do see that much of Illinois, Indianapolis gets involved with 6 to 12 inches of snow, and St. Louis will get involved with a more significant snowstorm in this scenario as well. And for this first snowstorm, I will say that the certainty is pretty high, so in many of these areas, you could expect right around 6 inches of snow, um, as it seems pretty likely at this point. We're going to see snow throughout Wisconsin and Iowa, at least for this first low pressure system. But like I said, for this second low pressure system expecting, expected to develop right after this first low pressure system moves through, the certainty does definitely become higher. And I'll keep you guys update over the next several days regarding any changes in the forecast. Take a look at the European model's forecast over the next um, week we do see that it's at least for this first low pressure system again the forecast is very similar so you need to prepare in places like milwaukee right up along the mississippi river valley as well you need to prepare for anywhere from one to three to six to 12 inches of snow but moving east where we see a fairly different scenario where much of the southern midwest like illinois indiana don't experience any snowfall at all from the second low pressure system while the northeast does experience snowfall in this scenario as well it's expecting um, much of the east coast of, is experiencing a lot less snowfall than what the gfs model is forecasting where we see more like one to three inches of snow for much of the bigger northeast cities rather than the six to 12 inches of snow it wanted to bring to philadelphia and washington dc is experiencing no snow at all in the european model scenario so still a pretty high level of uncertainty with this forecast but again i'll keep you guys update over the next several days regarding any changes in the forecast so here's the current forecast regarding the next major winter storm that's expected to move through. I'm again leaning a little bit more to what the European model is stating since it's been the more reliable model. So if you're in the pink, that's where you're most likely to experience snowfall over the next week. While in the blue, it's a little, it's po still possible, very well possible. So you need to be aware all throughout the area shaded in either pink or blue for potentially major snowfall over the next week associated from this first low pressure system where it is likely that the northern great lakes will experience a major snowstorm as we approach the mid to late week and then we could see a major snowstorm for much of the east coast city so you want to pay very close attention to that as we approach the weekend but uh thank you guys for watching